Hey guys, James here from PlumberParts.co.uk. I'm sorry I'm not wearing a Plumber Parts t-shirt. It's absolutely freezing. I've got to say, I've had a bit of a shocker today. I got in the van to do a call out. I had, uh, well, it turned out to be a frozen pressure relief pipe and they'd got a leaking pressure relief valve. So there's a few little things that kind of went together to create a leak inside the house. Uh, but anyway, I had to fix that with my hand tools. Right, so I'm in Cambridge at the moment with Lucia. Fixed her boiler just now. Are you happy? Yes. Play go. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> because as I was getting in the van, I had a load of ice under my boot, my clutch foot slipped off, clutch flew up, and it's literally splattered the gearbox in the van, so pretty gutted. But in good terms, I did a poll on Instagram asking whether you guys wanted us to make hoodies, and you guys came back saying, yes, we do, which I was really, really pleased about. So anyway, before we get on with the video, I've got to undo the van, I'm afraid, unload it into the garage, because it's going off to that place the van doesn't want to go to. It's like going to the dentist, isn't it, for vans, and they absolutely hate it. We've got a feel for it, really. It's a uh, bad time, so anyway, let's get her unloaded. Let's get down. Let's get down from some rats. They're not going to hang themselves. They're not going to be hung by some little elves. Let's get into this subject. Into the subject we shall delve. Let's get on right now. What is for the rubber? I might be fitting one radiator in this video, which is going to be this beautiful Saxon range radiator all the way over from our friends Trade Radiators, and I'll leave a link to this radiator in the description below. But I also might be fitting a little towel rail just around the corner there, do you know what I mean? I would love to split it into two separate videos, but I don't really have time. Anyway, so firstly let's have a look where we're actually going to put this lovely little red rad. It's going to go under the window just over there behind me. Now the dividing wall between the sort of main bedroom area and this little ensuite is tight up to that window. You've seen us do loads of videos of fitting radiators, so hopefully just by watching in this video you're going to get a little bit of an idea as to what I'm doing and why and we can just get on with it. Let's go. I just want to say a very quick thing right. Trade radiators, I buy my radiators often. About two hours later I get a phone call from some old boy asking when and where I want it delivered which is wicked because they can literally deliver it to site which I find really handy and it's always delivered by some happy geezer they ring you when they're about an hour away, so you're just never in the dark. I mean, I'm, I don't like being in the dark. I'm afraid of the dark. So as you can see, no damage whatsoever. Always really well sort of packed and that sort of thing. Now, this is a little diddy additional radiator for this room. It's quite a large room, and I just felt that we could do probably with a few extra BTUs. And I did a little calculation as well. I've got like, there's loads of apps you can get on your phone that will teach you how to get the BTU ratings for stuff. I went with fine, didn't I? You know, had a look on there. Um, Saxon radiators, just talking about these, originate from the Bronze Age. They're a little bit like your old column type rad, whereby you have to sort of build up uh, your ends, and also you do a fairly chunky wall hangers like that on there. So really what I'm saying is, the first thing you guys want to do is get your all your little bits on like that. Oh man. Now remember these are all directional, so you have to sort of make sure you get these right. All the threads on these are one way or t'other. You guys hopefully get the idea now that I love doing video tutorials with radiators that don't weigh a lot. <laughs> I mean, it'd be daft, wouldn't it, for me to get a radiator that was, what, 2000 by 700 double panel convector, and think, yeah, this is the one I've been waiting for. It's the one I've been waiting for to do a radiator video. They've got rubber O-rings on these anyway, so you won't need to put PTFE on there, but if you feel like you want to, by all means do. I'm just gonna bung these valves on now, guys, but I'm not gonna show you how to do that because we've done it a million times. All right, so, you know, I'm just gonna get on with that now. Right, guys, if possible, what you always wanna do is get your radiator central under the window, which on this is 11 inches. We're going back in time with our measurement. There is our mark there. Just recheck that. And then, as usual, I like to figure out exactly how high I'm gonna get my rad, so I don't want it to be sort of silly high. So about here, I mean, there's no real hard and fast rule as to how high you can have it. You, you sort of want it. So, I'll just go like that. See, that is the tiniest little mark. We know now as well that under here we're gonna have our center. So I can just pop that on the line there and then just further down out of sight when the radiator's hanging on the wall, you're not gonna see that. We put our little center line. 
Next thing you want to do is grab your radiator itself and grab the clips that came with it. Don't put your clips on like that because you'll see them. Obviously put them in this side so they're pointing inwards, okay? Now the thing is, you can find out a few little things without even needing to hang the clips on there. Firstly, the distance they have to be away from each other, top to bottom. That's easily ascertained by measuring the distance between the top or bottom of that one and then the top or bottom of this one. So on this one, it's 35 centimetres. If you want, just scribble that on the wall. 35, or as we call it in the world of normality, 350 millimetres. And then the distance between the two is 240. So it's 350 by 240. Distance down from the top, we're gonna to measure there, is seven centimeters. Got our nick there already. So I can measure down from that, seven centimeters, pop that little nick on there. What we'll do, we'll just bring this up a bit so we know where our which mark to measure away from. So we're just gonna come up to here a bit. Uh, 240 divided by two is 12. And then there as well, like so. So just make sure 12 there, and then just measure the other way, and you know you'll have 12. Boom, shakalaka. Fapping today. 350 down, that's just there, so that's the top of our next one as well. Pop that in there, line that up on there like so, and make our hole, one and two. And then in a minute, I'm just gonna draw these across here. So it's very important you get these ones level here. See that? Boom. We've got another one of them to do there. Got to remember we're doing the inside, aren't we? See, it's so easy to make that mistake, especially when you're making a video about it and not 100% concentrating. It's <laughs> got a little bit further up. And you do obviously have play because that means, you know, because your whole shapes denote the fact that you've got a little bit you can sort of do. So that one there and then on the inside of that one there. Easy peasy yet again. In a sec, I'm just going to quickly drill my holes. You don't have to see me doing that. We're going to, you know, this is a very quick video, so let's just recap what we've done here. We measured the distance from how far down we wanted it. We got our centre, then measured our distance down from the top of the radiator. Then we got our top of the radiator to the bottom of our clip, our actual clip branch. Then we got our centres, then we figured out how far out we needed to, to do our drilling. 240 divided by two is 120, so we measured out 120 that way, 120 that way. And then we've got the distance from the bottom to the bottom or the top of the top, it doesn't matter. That measurement's always gonna be the same, isn't it? And that was 350 mil. We go down there, down there, and then we know that's the tops or the bottoms, depending on which way around you've done it of our bracket. The first thing, and now I would say it's a good idea to pop your bracket on, measure from the distance of the bracket to the center, about 70 mil. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna come out this far, so that's 70 mil. Really, the easiest way to do it now is you know how far, you know where the center of your radiator is because it's there. You know that that's now the center of that valve, like that one there, like so. Center of the valve there, and then the center of this valve here. I know exactly where they are. I can mark them on the floor just like that. Come out 70 mil, because we've measured it just now. That is here. It's just too easy, guys. It really is. It's just too easy. So easy, so easy. Was a was a was a was. That. Bring that across here. So we've got our hole to drill here. And we've got a hole to drill here for our pipes to come up nice and straight into the bottom of our radiator. Now, I've checked down below. There aren't any dead bodies down there, no dead beasts. And above all, obviously, being serious, there aren't any wires down there and there are no pipes either. So I'm going to be able to drill my holes now, drill these holes now as well, get my brackets fitting on the wall, hang my radiator, and then we're ready to do our final little bit of pipe work. Pop our little booble on there. Oh, dearie, dearie me. It's lovely and level winter. Right then, so what I've got to do now is well, I'm going to drop the two copper stubs down for this now and then we'll pop downstairs and you can watch us basically get all our pipe work in for that right now. Also, while I'm at it, on this same little line of 260mm bits of butte line, which are the pipes that we first fixed a couple of months ago, well, probably six or seven months ago. Sorry, Emily, taking a little bit of time on this one, and I? I've quickly just got to pop on this little towel rail. Nice and easy job. I don't really need to describe it. If you want me to do an in-depth towel rail marking out view job thingy, then I'll probably do that in the studio once we've got that all set up. You can just watch me do it, strip it down, and do it in like five seconds. Now, all right? So there we go, that little beast is done there. One thing I'd like to point out to you guys that you might want to know, um, that's a very narrow towel rail, and that means that what I've done, I've put my top brackets a little bit lower than where I usually would, so that means you've got a chance to get that top sort of towel on. 
but also I've set them out quite a long way as well. The whole towel rod is set off the wall, so you're gonna have to sort of fold up your towel more, aren't you, to be able to get it in between those two rails and get it down there. It's little practical things like that, that when you're on a job for the customer or when you're doing it yourself, you can make it a little bit easier at the end. There's no point leaving yourself a tiny little space like that and you're not gonna be able to get it on. You might have also noticed as well that I've got two lock shields on that because generally I always want the heated towel rails to come on regardless of you know what the rest of the heating system's doing. Uh, so if there's other TRVs that are opening and closing, that's fine, but you're always gonna want those towels to dry out and be warm, so that's one thing. There's nothing worse than drying off your bits with a cold towel. I know, so does George, big G knows, he got bits. So now all I need to do is go down to where our four copper stubs are sat down and get them all butte lined in. That's the plan, so let's get on with that now. Right then guys, first thing we've got to do is don the best hat in plumbing. And uh, pretty much, I've just got to drill away. What I'm gonna do, there's obviously been a change, isn't there? When you're married and you're doing a job, there's often changes as to where radiators and toilets and other things are gonna go. You know what I mean? So I obviously first fixed for a radiator to go central to that wall or put it on that side. But anyway, there's been changes, Ch -ch -ch changes. And then we're gonna now get it moved around and done like that. So I've got a pipe there and a pipe there that are of that size for our little towel rail. So all I need to do is just put two bits of boot line tin, go across and then up exactly where I need to go, easy peasy. Then all I've got to do is extend those two round and then get them two connected up. So that means the pipes that currently look like this will now look like this. You can see how much I've used these now as well. They've got rusty, I'm a bit naughty. Tools are there to be used, you know, and abused. <laughs> there we go guys, all done. We've got our pipe work in, we've put a little bit of butte line on there. I keep saying butte line in an Australian accent. I don't know why, but I keep dying it. Uh, but we've got two radiators on there. Let's have a quick look schematically from above what we've actually done. So we ascertained our flow and return pipes for the heating system, because obviously what goes out must come back. And we've teed into them to go up to our lovely little tower radiator. Then we've carried those two tails on round to that little radiator on the back wall. Now, one thing I want to tell you is that we fed those two radiators right effectively in one set of 16 millimeter pipe but they were teed off earlier on in 22 mil now as a rule of thumb for you guys i'd always say the maximum amount of radiators you want on a 15 or 16 millimeter pipe system is three radiators um otherwise after that you're going to start getting problems with balancing the last radiator might not get warm that sort of thing so it's pretty simple to sort of figure out so that's pretty much it we'll be back doing some more videos here pretty soon i've also got to cut open a four tick tank and show you what's inside there but i'm going to do that over at the studio and we'll have a look at how they work as well and there's loads more stuff coming up as usual plumbing disasters bits and bobs i'm about to sneeze no it's not coming man i hate it when that happens beanies right if you want to buy some beanies we're selling loads at the moment go to shop.plumberparts.co.uk or click on the link at the end of this video or click on the link in the description below you'll be able to go over there we sell beanies t-shirts so follow us over on instagram as well by clicking on the link that's appearing right now and there's also a link to that below as well and by all means the most important thing you can do is subscribe to plumber parts by clicking on the link as well so just click on some links i might leave some links to some sexy websites and then you'll be like oh sorry love i was what i was watching plumber part anyway uh <laughs> right anyway the system's filled up now i've got to pack all my tools away i've got to get in the gym then i'm gonna go down the pub and have a quick beer tonight with one of my mates oh also one thing i will say is follow us over on times with james as well that's the blog channel if you're not interested in my outside life outside of plumbing don't follow it okay i'm not forcing you to don't follow it if all you want to see is plumbing videos, then by all means, keep following us here at Plumber Parts. But if you want to see what I get up to outside of Plumber Parts, then maybe you'd like to follow my vlog channel, Times of James. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, I'll see you soon, guys. And remember to hold tight. I thought you enjoyed that video. I hope you like lost too. Remember to check out Times with James. You know you want to. And if you want that much, click that button right now. Oh, my God. The latest video is in the top left. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that, man. <laughs>